Hello and welcome back to the channel How to Open a Nursery or welcome if it's your first time here. In today's video you are going to learn about schemas. You are going to learn what are schemas, the different types of schemas and the role that you as the adult and the role that your environment plays in supporting schemas. Whether you're a parent or childcare professional, understanding schemas is important to best supporting your children in their play and their development. I've studied schemas extensively and I love talking about it. And by the end of this video, whether you're completely new to schemas or you've learned lots about it before, you should leave this video having a better understanding of it and be able to use the knowledge you've gained in this video to better support your child or your children. So firstly, what are schemas? Simply put, schemas are behaviours that children will display whilst they're exploring the world and trying to figure out how things work. Children have a very strong drive to repeat actions, moving things from one place to another, covering things up, putting things into containers, moving in circles and throwing things. These things can be observed through their play. Schemas can vary from child to child. Some children will demonstrate a variety of schemas during their play, whereas others will show just a few or maybe none at all. So how can we support our children? Your role is crucial. Children will benefit from adults who observe, are responsive and are led by children's actions and creativity. It is important to allow children to be fully engrossed in their play without interruptions. If we see your child or your children absorbed in a schema, it is your role to take a step back and try not to impose your ideas or thinking on them too soon. Being active learners requires children to explore by themselves. It is important for you, whether you be a parent or a childcare practitioner, to be good at observing children in play so that you can identify and understand the schemas that your children are displaying. Now at this point, you may be wondering what schemas you should be identifying. Well, there are numerous, literally numerous. Though the general consensus amongst theorists is that there are eight key schemas that children are more likely to demonstrate. Though, as previously alluded to, some children may never appear to demonstrate schemas in their play, whereas others may show one schema predominantly for a long period of time, whereas others may show multiple schemas changing between them. What is important is being able to identify what schema is being shown so that you can better support your child during that play. So what are the eight different types of schemas? We will go through them alphabetically now, starting with connecting. This involves children joining things together connecting objects and opening and closing things. Children will find resources like strings to tie things together or they might staple paper together for example. You might find that a child enjoys doing work at like a workbench where they can hammer nails and wood connecting pieces together. Having resources at your home or at your child provision like train tracks will greatly support this. Children displaying this schema will enjoy taking things apart and putting things back together though they might not be as good at the latter part of that. Water play is also great for supporting this schema as it provides the opportunity for children to connect things using pipes and guttering. The next schema is enclosing. This involves containing things, creating borders around objects or themselves. An example of where children might demonstrate this in their play is by creating fences or barricades around things like animals or themselves. So for example, they might build a train track and put animals in the middle or put borders around their artwork. You might notice that your child or your children enjoys playing with tents a lot building tunnels and dens, or even just climbing into cardboard boxes. One thing you need to think about is whether your indoor and outdoor provision has resources in order to support this type of play. Moving on to enveloping. Enveloping involves covering objects or themselves and hiding things in discrete places. They may enjoy actively filling and emptying various containers with things like natural materials or other objects. You may notice that your child becomes deeply involved with how they and objects can be covered with materials. The child may enjoy burying things in sand or wrapping up toys in blankets or paper. Children will spend time folding up paper really small so that it can fit in their pockets. It's important to have open end resources to support children in their enveloping. Orientation. With orientation, children will enjoy experimenting with different viewpoints like hanging upside down. Your child may turn things around or look at things from on top of a table or underneath a table. Your child may also bend over backwards to look at things through their legs. They will start experimenting by looking at things through different viewpoints by using things like cardboard tubes, binoculars or magnifying glasses. Children displaying this schema may find it difficult to sit still. To support this schema, 
it's important for you to help your child to identify and manage risks. For example, if they want to climb on objects. Also think about how flexible your daily routine is. Positioning. Children demonstrating the positioning schema will enjoy lining up objects or themselves in a particular way. Providing resources that allow children to do this is the best way to support them. So have resources that are similar to each other, like a selection of cars or a selection of trains. Different colored blocks will also aid this. The sixth key schema alphabetically is trajectory. This was actually one of the first schemas observed in children and it involves moving objects by throwing, dropping or rolling. It can also involve moving one's own body. You may notice that your child or children repeatedly throws their food, watching where it's gone, or they may repeatedly climb and then jump off things, or even just repeatedly kick randomly or kick objects. With trajectory, children will be experimenting with space and how movements occur. A common theme with slightly older children, like children that are toddlers and preschool age, is a fascination with running water. As they get even older, they may explore the use of lines and shapes within their drawings and mark making. Moving on to transporting. As the name suggests, it involves moving objects or themselves from one place to another. This could be moving objects in their pockets, hands or bags. It can also involve transporting other people. Children displaying the schema may be seen as difficult to settle or show difficulty staying at one activity long enough to participate. Ensuring you provide lots of physical outdoor activities will help support this schema. The final key schema is rotation. This involves showing an interest in things that spin, drawing circles or spinning themselves. You might find that your child enjoys turning on and off taps, winding and unwinding strings or playing with hoops. In your home, you might find that your child enjoys watching your washing machine spin or rolling on the floor. Providing resources that roll like wheels and lids will all help support this schema. But those are the eight most common types of schemas. Now you may have listened and recognised that this is something your child or children do. But hopefully now understanding the rationale behind it, that your child is experimenting, should help you to support your child and provide activities to allow them to explore these schemas. The environment plays an important role in supporting schemas. Your child or children need to feel supported in a nurturing environment. This gives them the confidence to explore their thoughts and ideas. Children best learn through repetition, making mistakes and then trying again. This gives them the ownership of their learning. It allows them to make their own connections and develop as learners. So try to set up your play spaces so that they're exciting, inventive and inspiring with lots of opportunities for children to take ownership of their experience. The quality of the learning environment is crucial in providing the potential for children's creativity and allowing them to confidently follow their own interests. All of this should help give you a better understanding of schemas and better support your children. To help further support you in your understanding of schemas, I've created an informative poster which you can download using the link in the description. It comes in black and white and you have the option of getting a hard copy or download it straight to your computer. This is great if you run a setting as you can display it in your building or for yourself just to refresh your memory whenever you need to. So get your copy now. You can find a link to it in the description and I will also pin a link in the comment section. But before you go, I wanted to thank you for watching. I really hope you have gained some knowledge to better support your children in their play and development. If you have learned something new or even if you just enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate if you just hit that like button. And if you work in or run a childcare business, don't forget to subscribe. I post regular videos not only helping you to open your nursery, but to also run and grow all different types of childcare businesses. So hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. God bless.